Hello and welcome to another video of uh, uh, IEL edX AS level physics. Today we are going to do unit 2, uh, which is WPH12 01 of October 2024. So today in part 1 we will do the MCQs. So let's start. Um, before going into details, please uh, like and subscribe my channel. I do a lot of effort, I put a lot of effort on finding and solving the questions for you. So I really need your support in order to get some boost and to get some positive energy from you guys to get, keep uh, working and keep doing work for you. Okay. So question number 1. Which of the following describes light intensity? So light in intensity is actually power per unit area. Okay. Uh, I don't think there is a problem in that. In that. So intensity is power per unit area. Therefore, the option is yeah. Therefore, the option is B. Okay. Question number two. Light from discharge tube is viewed through a diffraction grating. An emission line spectrum is observed. Which of the following explains how electrons in the discharge tube produce the emission in line spectrum? Okay, this is a very good question. They're saying you are watching a discharge tube through a diffraction grating and you are observing which spectrum? Line spectrum. This is very important. Okay. Line spectrum. So what is line spectrum? Let's take a look. <clears throat> you see, there's a word we call, we, we understand that continuous spectrum. Everything that we see in like normal life without the help of any prism or lens, we, we see this kind of light. When it all of these colors mix together, we get this white color, okay? We get this white color. And uh, when and this is the spectrum when the electron is not excited or it is not uh, de-excited, okay? It is like normal. Now, when electron ex like absorbs some energy, what happens? It moves from a lower shell to higher shell, right? So, for example, uh, electron from lower shell is moving to a higher shell. One place, uh, one electron only, you can say. One electron is moving from here to here by absorbing two joules of energy. For example, it reaches from uh, ground state to excited state. Okay. So, this place will be emptied, right? This, will, this place will be weakened. So, this will be shown like a gap here. Okay. So, uh, absorption spectrum is a spectrum which is made when electrons absorb the energy and move to upper shells or higher energy levels, okay? So their ground state or their lower uh, spaces or lower level spaces are emptied. Therefore, we see gaps. These gaps shows that the electron moved up. Similar to this, when everything is up, nothing is down there. For example, everything is gone up. Nothing is down there. Everything is excited, okay? You see black thing. Everything is black. It means nothing is there. In the low level, you don't have anything. Everything is black. But suddenly, one electron is de-excited and moving down. What does it mean? It means it is releasing its energy and it is coming down again. So now you will see one electron here. Therefore, you will see a line. You understand that? So emission spectrum shows that electron is moving from higher level to lower level. Therefore, you will see just one line. And in the absorption spectrum, you will see that one gap which shows that electron is moved from that specific area from lower shell to higher shell. Now, in this question, they said, when you look at the discharge tube, you see line spectrum, line emission spectrum. So you have to now clearly understand that what they're actually talking about. They're actually being referred, they're actually referring to the electrons are moving to lower energy levels and emitting photons because they're moving from high to low, from high to low. Okay. And when they move from high to low, they release photon or they release energy in the form of photon, release of energy in the form of photon. In the form of Photon, okay, so therefore the option is D. It is not possible A because electron move to higher energy level than absorb photon. That shows gaps, not lines. Okay, Elect excited electrons move to higher energy level than emit photon. No, it is not possible when electron move from higher level to another higher level. It means it has to absorb some energy. If you want to move from two meter to four meter, it does not mean you will release energy. It means you need to get some energy in order to jump from two to four. Okay, so this is wrong again. And excited electrons move to lower energy level than absorb photon. This is again wrong. When you jump from higher level to lower level, it means you release energy, not absorb energy. Okay, so the only option is D. A student stands a distance T from a wall. She makes a loud sound. She hears the uh, echo of the sound from the wall after a time T. Which of the following expressions give the speed of the sound wave? Okay, this is you. This is wall. This is the distance between you and the wall. Now you do the echo and you're like you are echoing from your mouth and it is moving like this distance. So this is D and it is coming back and doing the echo and you're hitting the echo again. So the total distance covered is 2D. What is the speed formula? Speed formula is distance over time. What is the distance here? 2D over time. So therefore the option is A. <clears throat> A displacement time graph for a point on a surface of water wave is shown. Which of the following expressions gives the frequency of the wave in hertz? Okay. So uh, frequency is the reciprocal of time period. A time period is time to complete one cycle. One cycle is starting from this place to this place. Okay. So here time is 0 0.1. Here time is 0 0.7. So the total time is 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1 equals 0 0.6. 
So the time period is 0 0.6, therefore the frequency is 1 over 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1, okay? B. 5. A current in a wire causes the temperature of the wire to increase. Which row of the uh, table describes the changes to the wire as the temperature increases? Okay. So you, you have to remember that inside a wire, there are some fixed ions, which are like this. Okay. We call these ions as lattice atoms. Okay. And this is the free electron actually, which takes the current. Okay. This is the negative electron or negative charge particle, which is moving through the wire. And, 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 and we say that the current is flowing, not because of these lattice ions, but because of the flow of the electrons. Okay, now when energy is, uh, when temperature rises, what happens actually, these started to move up and down. These start to move up and down very rapidly, okay? So their, their vibration up and down is increased rapidly. Therefore, this electron get a lot of collisions with these. So its straight path is really disturbed. It, it strikes them, comes back, then strike again, come back, then strike again, go up, down, like zigzag path and then move in that way. It means you have created a lot of resistance in the pathway of the electron because of the rise in temperature. This is what we refer to as rise in resistance, okay? So uh, because uh, of the rise in the temperature of the wire, the amplitude of lattice vibrations increases, therefore the resistance increases as well, okay? So option is D. A circuit shown include a thermistor. The temperature of the thermistor increases. Which row of the table shows how the reading on the ammeter and the voltmeter changes? Okay. <clears throat> You have to remember that when the temperature rises, okay, the resistance of the thermistor decreases, okay. And you have to remember according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, what this law says, if you are supplying 10 volts here, you have to have a total potential drop of 10 volts on both of these two. For example, there are 7, here 3. So in total, you cannot have more than 10, okay, or less than 10. You must have the sum equals to 10. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So now when temperature, when the, when the resistance decreases what happens v equals ir okay so when your resistance decreases temp resist at I, current is not going to change at the moment so what you say that your potential decreases here so it may decrease from 3 to 1.5 so what will happen from 1.5 it is going down from 3 to 1.5 it has to rise to 8.5 so that the voltage drop should remain equal to 10 because Kirchhoff voltage law says how much is the supplied voltage you have should be equal to the voltage being consumed in your circuit okay so previously for example it was 7 plus 3 now it should be 8.5 plus 1.5 so they're actually saying what will be the effect on the readings of ammeter and voltmeter okay so uh, this is quite for sure that uh, the the reading because here the voltage is being dropped so here it has to rise so this should be the answer okay this is for sure now again when you uh, your total resistance of the circuit because you have two resistors here and for example this is five and this is three so five plus three eight okay so now it is dropped to 1.5 for example so now you have total resistance of 6.5 so when, when the total resistance of the circuit decreases for example though when the when the road is empty it means the electron will travel very fast right so it means the uh, when when you when the when the resistance of the wire decreases or the or the circuit decreases it means the electron has a freedom to move very fast it means the current will ha has to rise right so the on only option here should be d <coughs> Particle X of mass M is moving with velocity V and has de Broglie wavelength lambda. Particle Y has a de Broglie wavelength of 0 0.25. Which row of the table could give the mass and velocity of particle Y? Okay. So uh, we can do it uh, in a way that uh, the momentum or de Broglie's wavelength formula is P equals H over lambda, right? And then we need to see that there is an inverse relation between the wavelength and the momentum, okay? So momentum is we know that MV equals H over lambda, right? So since you have the, uh, you have the, um, wavelength about quarter, right? So if you have a, wave, a wavelength short by a quarter, then it means you must have a momentum uh, more about four times, right? Because this four will go there and becomes 0 0.25. So therefore, we must have this thing on the left-hand side because we see inverse relationship. If this is one by four, then it should be four, okay? So there is an inverse relation. So one quarter of wavelength means four times of the momentum. Now, where do we get the four times of the momentum? Not here, not here, and not here. Here we are getting eight times of the momentum. This is eight MV, which is eight P. This is two MV, means two P. This is four P, and this is 0 0.25 P. So only option is B, okay? <clears throat> so uh, you have a circuit here, and they are asking you to find the resultant, resultant resistance. So here, for example, it is one, and the total resistance here is two, and total resistance here is three. We need to find the total resistances R1. So R1, the circuit shows a cell connected to two resistors. The cell has negligible internal resistance. Which of the following expression gives the power in watts uh, transferred by the 20 ohms resistor? Okay. <clears throat> power is uh, equals to voltage time. Okay. 
so we will find current what is current here this is total voltage this is total uh, resistance i equals v over total i equals v over r so it will be 1.5 over 20 times 30 so i will write i equals 20 times 30 i am not multiplying them because uh, sorry plus this is plus i am not multiplying them because in the mcq's option they have not multiplied the answers so i will keep them as it is okay this is your i now what about v for v i will use the potential divider formula potential divider formula and what is potential divider formula you, they, they are asking about the power for this one okay so we have to find the voltage here for for voltage uh, here we will use the potential divider formula which says because here you have small resistance 20 small resistance over total resistance small resistance 20 and here small distance 30 so total distance will be 20 plus 30 so this is like a formula for the potential divider okay you need to remember that uh, small resistance over total resistance divided by small voltage over total voltage okay this is like the formula for the potential divider so here you have small resistance is 20 total resistance is 20 plus 30 small uh, voltage means voltage across 20 this is what you need to find right and the total voltage is 1.5 so from here you have the voltage to be equals to 20 into 1.5 over 20 plus 30 so this will value you will uh, put in here and you will get the power so 20 into 1.5 over 20 plus 30 now you have to see where do you have this power i believe you have this power at option c what about d no, no, no. So only option is C. Okay. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. I really need your support. I will see you in part two of this uh, paper. Up till then, God bless you and take care of yourself. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye.